Hollywood. A big gust of wind is on its way. It's the Tom Likas Show. Race for impact. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. With wide open telephones on this Friday at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Jessica on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Okay, well, I'm just sitting here um, on the parking lot. We call the 210, and I'm listening to you give other people advice, and I kind of have a legal issue I wanted to ask you about, and granted, you're not an attorney or anything like that, but maybe, you know, I value your opinion, so I thought maybe you might have some advice for me. Um, I had a car accident last year, and... um, my car was totaled, and the other person's car was totaled as well, and it was my fault. And um, apparently my insurance was not, I don't know, I guess it didn't have enough on it to cover the other person's car. And since this has been since September of last year, we've been trying to settle with the insurance companies, and the other party is just not going to settle, and she's going to try and take me, she's going to try and sue me over the value of her car. My question is... I don't own anything. Um, I'm only 24 years old. I, I don't believe she can, you know, gar- get any of my assets because obviously I don't have anything. So, is Let me tell you what she can get. She gets a judgment against you. You'll have to file bankruptcy. And when you do, your credit is going to be effed. Ugh. So how do they suppose, I mean, you can't suck blood from a turnip. I don't have all kinds of money, so how do they suppose they're going to get this money out of me? It's going to be like payments or... I, I mean, I don't, I, that, that is a question for an attorney. Right. Why don't you have enough car insurance? I know because you want to spend money on clothing and traveling <laughs> and, and, and having fun, and you didn't want to spend any money on car insurance. Well, I didn't know at the time that I was signing up for it. I just figured, oh, this is a good deal. I'm paying a low rate. I didn't. I didn't. Well, but you're supposed to find out what the coverage is. Right. I guess it was only like five thousand dollars. Don't you even my... know what you're buying? You got the minimum amount of coverage that would make you legal to drive in California. Right. But uh, you know, unless you think you're the best driver in the world and will never have an accident <laughs> for fifty years, that's not enough insurance. My other question is, um, with small claims like that, I mean, she's going to obviously take me to court for this. Can they garnish wages and things like that? I Again, mean, a question I don't know the answer to, but uh, you you had better hire an attorney. So I should, that was another question. I should get an attorney. and Yeah, because, well, the insurance it. company did what they were supposed to do, right? They offered the entire amount that they were supposed to pay, right? Right, they did. And she said, no thanks. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um You know, again, you did this to yourself, and it's something you really should have paid attention to, and you didn't. So now you have to hire an attorney to try to make the best out of a bad situation. Right. Well, Uh, I love it if you could take me out uh, with the By the way, I recommend you hire an attorney, even if you have to borrow money from your parents or whatever you have to do. Yeah. Do Do not cheap out again like that. I won't. I know. It's that, just it's a terrible situation. I didn't know that even was a possibility. I didn't even think. I just thought you had insurance, and that's what happens. They pay it, and you didn't not, think there were. You didn't know there were, there are like limits, and the you know the more you pay, the more insurance you get. Well, I knew that. I just figured if I had the insurance to legally be driving, that if I had an accident, it would be covered. No, I that's the know. minimum. That is the minimum coverage. Right. The okay. minimal. Oh, I'm really scared. <laughs> yeah, well, if you get a good enough attorney, uh, you won't be as scared as you are now. Yeah, I'll just prove to them that I'm poor and see what they can do. <laughs> well, again, that, that's between you and your attorney to figure out how to do that. But there are attorneys who negotiate these settlements, who know what other companies are doing and what individuals are doing and what the law says they can get away with. But you definitely need a good attorney. Okay. You don't want to be bankrupt. Yeah, I don't want that. My credit's really good, so I don't want anything to happen with my credit. That's a big issue of mine, and I'm like, oh, I've worked so hard to make my credit good, and I don't want anything to happen. So, okay, I'll take your advice, and I'll get an attorney, definitely, and hopefully everything will work out. Hopefully it will. Unbelievable how many people just let these things go. I can't figure out how to get better credit. Well, I do have this one bill I refuse to pay. (laughs) 
1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to, uh, oh boy, T on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? How are you doing? I'm doing okay, T. Uh, first time calling a long time listener, Tom. Appreciate the, uh, answering my phone call. Um, my dilemma is, uh, is, uh, actually pretty similar to the, 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 the previous call that he just finished talking to, actually. Um, it, it was a, it was a card from Bank of America, the credit card, actually, and, um, and it was about maybe like 1300 on there, and it, it's actually my brother-in-law's wife. Uh, we were talking about this about or this over the past weekend, and I actually was like, man, if I get to Tom Lake and I can talk to him about this. So I uh, actually got through, so yeah, I'm talking about you. And, and the situation is, um, it was 1300 The she, she was at work, and she had the credit card run for a while. She actually got laid off, so she couldn't pay it off. She had three more of the credit cards besides that one, and she decided to let that one go. And... Uh, I guess they're like calling her now, or calling my brother-in-law, or I mean, my brother, and and uh, and trying to tell them, you know, they're going to sue them for that. I was wondering if that's possible. Of course. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That, okay. That, that makes sense because like the first caller had the same dilemma. Or the I previous. mean, again, that's being a deadbeat. Yeah. Right. Right. I understand. Yeah. I mean, you I have you have no right to get a credit card and use it and then not pay it back. You don't. Right, you just. Right. You don't have the right to do that. Right. I'll, t- I'll tell them. <laughs> And then the bank has the right to enforce their rights. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that that, that pretty much says it all about that one. I mean, so, yeah, right. I was... You have you have the right not to take the credit card. Right. Yeah. <laughs> wow, Tom. I appreciate it, man. I think like teaching on the ball here, please. Absolutely, T. Here you go. No cost. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. It's Jimmy on the Tom Like a Show. Hello. Hello? Jimmy? Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Great, great. I just want to uh, just really just extend my hand, you know, and just really just congratulate you for, you know, giving us uh, guys such great advice. I've been, you know, a long-time listener, first time actually calling you. Um, I was in a relationship for a while with a a girl, and um, she would get mad at me for listening to you all the time. We'd be driving around. She'd be like, oh, why are you listening to Tom Likas? i say, you know? He tells it like it is. And uh, it's too bad that when I'm driving, I can't be writing notes and stuff like that, because that's the kind of advice you give to all my guy friends. I tell all my guy friends to listen to you. And I got a question. How come some guys, they don't listen to you? They don't take your piece of advice? Because there's a lot of guys, um, and women for that matter, who uh, they think they know more than I do. You know the kind of person you tell them, you know, you know when you got a four-year-old, you say to the kid, don't put your hand over that blue flame coming out of the oven. It's right. hot. Uh-huh. Well, why? Well, why? Well, why? And then they do it when you're not looking. Right. And right. then they, they ah, I burned myself. That, that's what these people are. They're like children. You tell them the truth. You tell them the facts. You right. give them the advice. Uh, I give them the benefit of all of my experience. And it's like, but why? But why? Why do I have to pay my bill? Why can't I move in with my girlfriend who has six kids by six different fathers? Why? Yes, I've been living my life just, you know, uh, with your rules. You know, I'm not married. I'm like 30 years old. I have a good job and no kids. And you know what? I'm I'm not going to get married. And because all the women, all they want is your money. That's all they care about. And, um, you know, I'm from back east, and, and you're way better. You give way better advice than Howard Stern does, and you're so much better than Stern. Jimmy, okay. thank you. I really appreciate that and uh, take that as a compliment. I'm a big fan of Howard Stern. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm okay. Hey, uh, I just got back from my uh, fourth tour of Iraq, and... Uh, uh, my question to you, sir, is what do you think our government, where do you think our government is heading with uh, a very, very inexperienced elect president? Well, keep in mind, uh, we've had many uh, presidents with very little experience uh, with the military, if any at all. Uh, Bill Clinton was also not in the military, uh, and uh, we've had others as well. Was Richard Nixon in the military? I'm not sure about that either. Uh, that goes back, yeah, that goes back before my time. Well, Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan, I think uh, he made some movies, some training films for the military, but he was never in an actual war anywhere or in, <laughs> in the military. 
Now, I, my uh, final question, I'll let you go, is uh, a statement and then a question is, uh, I'm a Chief Warrant Officer 3, and uh, we often go out with, uh, you, you might say, strike teams, special ops teams. And, you know, I our hands have been tied so much over there, Tom, as fighting, and, you know, we the gloves have to come off eventually, and I'm, I'm hoping... You know, the rules of engagement, I know, aren't going to change drastically. However, do you think Obama will uh, do something in that nature? He, you know, he's, he's been rattling his swords about it. Well, I know uh, Obama is very uh, very vocal about wanting to go into Afghanistan. And uh, it doesn't sound to me like uh, he's looking to have some kind of limited situation. He wants to engage and find uh, Osama bin Laden. That's what he says. But, 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 but you know the uh, personally. Personally, by the way, I, I believe we should stop worrying about Osama bin Laden and start worrying about our own homeland security. Absolutely. Especially, <laughs> especially with the economy the way it is. I, I, I think we've got to make sure that everything is uh, all our P's and Q's are in order here. Um, what's your thoughts on Iraq? I mean, I've been, I've been in both locations. I went uh, a small time in Afghanistan and got pulled over to Iraq. And I, my opinion, Tom, if we start a fight, you better be man enough to finish it. And this, this government has always been known to finish a war, except for Vietnam we pulled out. And, uh, you know, it, it just saddens me because I know some fine gentlemen that have been buried because of the war. But at the same time, we're there. I want to see it finished. But... We need the support of the U.S. government. Well, the real problem you have is that people don't know who we're fighting against anymore now that Saddam Hussein was captured, and they don't know uh, what exactly we're doing. It's a civil war. At least that's how it appears to uh, people who live here. And uh, you know, just who is the enemy? Uh, you've got the government, which we helped install, uh, and they're, they're asking for us to leave. You know, Tom, there's no shortage of targets. If you got a man running down the street with his face covered and he's running from building to building, and one minute you see him with a weapon, the next minute you don't, and he's got his face covered, he's not military, he's not police. That should be a target, whether it's in the back, straight on. And you know what? We can't do nothing about it. We have to. We can't fire until fired upon, until we see them with a weapon in their hand. And that's sad because... Our guys here don't run down the street with uh, faces covered. And, you know, I mean, Homeland Security, George Bush, God bless him, we haven't had an attack since 9-11. And that's because of Patriot Act and uh, our Homeland Security. Well, uh, you're going to see, I think, some changes in that regard. Uh, but uh, most importantly, I think uh, um, that, you know, I, I'm hoping that uh, people are aware that the weakened economy weakens the United States. And we have to make sure we've got our ducks in a row here at home. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. Now with shorter commercial breaks, less commercials, more phone calls, taking them faster. With blinding speed at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom Bob on the top like your show. Hello, Professor Bobby Baby. Hey man, I called you two years ago. I was going through a horrible, horrible divorce. My wife was cheating on me, spending all the money, and you were like FEMA coming to my rescue. <laughs> I love that. And, and just don't call me Brownie. Me Brownie. Listen, I have tried. I have tried to call you guys to update you over the last two years of what's happened. And in addition to you saving me then, you've been, over the last couple of years, the absolute best playbook that a guy could have to getting lots of action and having a great time as a single guy. And on top of that, you're like a beacon for my next serious relationship. I have found a woman who has told me that I could call her woman. She will be happy to go get me a beer whenever I want and let me watch sports. She has a job, she makes her own money, she has a business, she has real estate holdings, and my life is so great. And I can't give you all the credit, 
But as I said, you were a big part of it, and I really appreciate it, brother. I love that, Bob. Thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing tonight? Hey. I'm doing okay. All right. Um, you know, I'm I'm just a little confused what I'm seeing now in the news the past couple of days about the collapse or the potential collapse of Bank of America and now that they're in trouble. And uh, wait a minute, biggest... just stop right there. I did not read about any potential collapse of Bank of America. Well, not not collapse, but that they're in trouble, I guess. And really, I, I mean, the bigger story is a client. I was at work today, and older gentleman who understands finances much more than me was explaining to me that Bank of America is apparently in trouble, and he went on to elaborate about the dollar and how, about how the dollar is losing value around the world and pretty much, you know, talked about... Well, even, and by the way, also, that that for the last couple of months has not been true either. The dollar has strengthened against the euro, has strengthened against the British pound, has strengthened against the peso of Colombia, has strengthened, has strengthened against the peso of Mexico, these uh, against the peso of uh, Argentina. These are just the currencies I can think of that I've been checking them. Okay, well, that that explains, uh, I guess that answers my question. He was actually mentioning the euro. He was talking about the euro, and he says there's been for a couple of years uh, plans with the, the American government, the Canadian government, Mexican government. Don't even start on the uh, the Amero, whatever it is. That, that, that is a yeah. figment of somebody's yeah. imagination. The, the, this is just another Internet urban myth, okay? It's not happening. Uh, the, and, and by the way, just, just like all these conspiracy theorists, their information is a day late and a dollar short or a euro short. <laughs> I mean, when I was in, uh, when I was in um, uh, Europe back in May, uh, w one euro cost a dollar sixty, right? And a euro now is down below a dollar forty. I think it's like a okay. dollar thirty-five or less. Uh, that's that's a substantial increase for the dollar against the euro. What was what was the original motivation for the euro? And I remember when it came out, I was hearing stories about people that didn't understand that lived in Europe about the about their money being converted, and then a lot of people were actually flushing money down toilets or throwing it away, thinking it wasn't any good anymore. Nah, I don't. I, I haven't heard about that, and I've been to Europe. I travel there fairly regularly. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the purpose of the euro was, I believe, that the people of the European Union thought they could compete uh, more effectively with, for example, the United States being as big as it was, by uniting behind one common currency. And by and large, the euro has been very good in that respect, because the economy in Europe ever since the euro has been excellent. And the euro today is still worth about 75% more than it was when, when they started it versus the dollar. Okay, okay. So I guess there's obviously no risk, or I guess for lack of a better term, a risk of that happening here? Well, first of all, I don't see what the danger of that would be, but I don't think it's likely to happen. I don't see any evidence that it's about to happen, except some moron produced a video and placed it on YouTube. Oh, okay. But okay. It's, it's just another thing for the conspiracy theorists to wring their hands over. Okay, I didn't even know it was a conspiracy theory thing. Actually, the guy who was talking to me about it today was a banker. He's about 60 years old, and he's... Well, just because you're a banker doesn't mean you can't be a conspiracy theorist. Okay, yeah, no, good point. I just, I'm going to go home and just look it up and... I would say I relax. And by the way, uh, because the dollar is so strong against the euro compared to uh, about eight months ago when I was in Europe, this would be a great time to go. Makes sense. <laughs> I'll tell you right, what, Tom. if I had some time off, I'd be there now. Well, I got time off, that's for sure, just like everybody else. <laughs> hey, man, I appreciate you answering my questions. Can you take me out with a bong rip? Yes, of course I can. Thank you, Tom. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Eric on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much. Hey, I gotta tell you about this crazy girl that I was dating a couple months ago. Uh, she, she won't stop stalking me ever since I broke up with her. And, uh, I've called the police. She's been arrested and everything. She went to jail and she's still coming back. What do you think I should do? Well, you could move, uh, but, uh, I would certainly continue to call the police, continue to have that, uh, uh, uh continue to have that, uh, uh, uh order enforced. And make sure that it doesn't stop being enforced. 
Maybe perhaps you can get it strengthened on the strength of all the uh, violations there have been. Yeah, I mean, she's going to be keep going in and out of jail. You know, I don't really want her to live that lifestyle. I've been trying to tell her to start thinking. That's with not your problem. Yeah, it really is. Stop isn't. worrying about her lifestyle. Her lifestyle is trying to become part of your lifestyle. Stop worrying about her. Yeah, I mean, even when I'm not there, Tom, she comes home. I mean, she comes to my to my mom's house, and she got in a fight with her and my grandma. Well, why do they answer the door? Uh, I don't know why. Well, why don't you ask them? You tell them, do not answer the door. Do not let her in. We that, but she still comes in by my window every single night. How does she do that? Don't you have a lock? No, she tries to get in through my window. Well, does and she get in? Sometimes. How does she do it? Yeah, one time she she cut the the slit on the screen, and my window was unlocked, and she got in, and she woke me up. Well, it's unbelievable, Tom. She will leak through any crack in the walls. Well, she's obviously insane. You could always talk to an attorney about this. All right. But I find, you know, when I get these calls from people, it's very suspicious how they never want any advice. They call in and they go, yeah, this girl won't leave me alone. And and you go, all right, why don't you do this? Well, but then uh, I talked to her the other day, and uh, what are you talking to her for? Well, I'm worried about her lifestyle. I, mean, I, I have the sneaking suspicion that people like you like this. Uh, no, I don't. I really hate it. Just... Well, then why would you even talk to her? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to stop talking to her completely. Even if I don't answer the phone calls, I'm going to ring the whole day, literally phone call after phone call after phone call after phone call after phone call. Well, I, on my phone, I don't know if you have it, I have something called select call forwarding. Do you know what I do to people who won't stop calling me? I forward, the, I forward their number, their calls. I forward it to themselves. So every time they call me, they get a busy signal. Uh I don't think I have that feature on my phone. <laughs> Why don't you call up the phone company? All right, I will, Tom. I'm, I want to try even harder. To Why don't you get it? Does she have a caller ID? Yeah. So you know it's her calling. Uh, there, there are things called selective blocking. You should talk to the phone company about what weapons they have to block people like that. And I thought about talking to a phone company. Why don't you do it tomorrow? Hey, Tom. Yeah. I'll I wonder if you could take me out with the bong hit and the Snoop Dogg. Yes, yes, I can. Biatch. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM-TOM-TOM. 1-800-5800-8666. The Tom Likas Show. You'll be 2 to 6 p.m. tomorrow. It's not like you should have six days a week, and if you're a glutton for punishment or just a glutton, you listen to our show about wine, beer, and spirits. The Tasty Room with Tom Likas, Sunday from 5 until 7 p.m. Pacific Time. Yeah, we're here all the time. We're the spit and glue that holds this radio station together. That's what we are. Skyler Stone has dropped in. How's it going? What's up, Tom? Not much. How are you? Tell me a story. Make it provocative. What do you got? <laughs> Did you have a good holiday? I had a great holiday. I uh, was up at my ranch up in Santa Barbara County, and... Uh, uh, up there, it is cold at night, and it was rainy, and uh, there was snow on the mountaintops, and I just had a half a quart of wood, and I uh, just uh, dug in and uh, got warm. Nice. It was great. Are you excited about the new year? I'm very excited. Can you feel the change coming? Well, it can't be any worse than last year. Of course, uh, maybe we shouldn't be too fast to say that, but it can't be any worse, in my opinion. I don't know. I mean, I, I, think, uh, I think that... Uh, uh Everybody's been talking about, you know, uh, Obama and saying, like, you know, oh, my gosh, what if something happens to him? I think he's going to be the first president to take his own life. I think he's going to get there the first day and go, oh, my gosh, I can't take this. <laughs> and after the first 24 hours, he's like, I'm done. I'm absolutely done. Well, you know, these presidents age. It's going to be interesting because Obama's a good looking guy. He looks relatively young for a president. Maybe younger than just about anybody else who's done it. And uh, what's he going to look like in four years? I don't know, man. But those Hawaii pictures, he looked great. I got I to gotta tell you. I didn't see the Hawaii picture. You didn't see him. When you did. That's all. It was all over the news. Like they stopped. They like stopped caring oh, about. Oh, 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 you mean when he went on vacation? Yeah, I thought yeah. you meant when he lived there when he was a kid or something. No, no. Well, I have those pictures too. If I can get, I can get. What do you do? Collect Obama pictures? I do. I actually have. I actually own um, Skylar Stone loves Obama dot com, 
and dot org. I'm working on dot net. It's a tough one to get though. The guy's holding out. So yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Ah, he did look good in Hawaii on vacation. That's the last vacation he's going to get for a while. Oh my, that guy's going to be so busy, man. It's just ridiculous. But I'm telling you though, like it's funny. I, you can feel everybody's kind of acting different in this town. But I'm just wondering. The reason I was asking if you went out of town over the holidays, like, do you feel like people are acting different everywhere? Has everybody had this little change movement going on, or do you think it's a very LA thing? Uh, I think. Well, here's the thing. I what I'm feeling is that people are are so worried about their jobs and, uh-huh. and the economy that they're not paying attention to Obama the way they were a year ago or six months ago when they're right. just going crazy for him. I think uh, people are just scared, scared, scared. And I talk to people and they're just freaking out. I, I wish it weren't true, but it seems to be. I don't even know how you can do a speech. If I, if I had to do a speech, I literally would probably just freak out and start convulsing on the floor. You know, I would, I, I wouldn't even know what, like right now, how, how do you talk to this country when everybody's looking to you for every single answer? And he's going to be so under the magnifying glass for everything that he has promised. It's, he's, I, I, I do not, uh, envy his position. Can you imagine what kind of speech he has to deliver? I mean, oh, next you week, get- you mean? Yeah. On the 20th? Yeah. Yeah. And, th- and then after that, doesn't he do the State of the Union address not yep. long after that? Can you imagine what kind of speech you have to give oh, right yeah. now? Absolutely. I mean, and after eight years of that stammering, stuttering George Bush, this guy's got to go up there. He he has to hit one out of the park like t- t- twice in a month he's got to do it. Yeah, I guarantee you like half of this town, all the screenwriters are being commissioned by him right now. To write like the greatest speech ever, you know what I mean? I mean, don't be surprised. I'm gonna, in fact, I'm gonna watch every presidential movie this week, like The American President and Dave. And I'm gonna make sure he's not lifting lines out of those movies. You know what I mean? Because he very well could be doing that right now. He's got somebody on that. Uh, uh, just, uh, just hope it's not all the presidents, man. Or yeah, yeah, exactly. Frost, Nixon, all of those. <laughs> Believable. So what have you been up to? All kinds of stuff. Uh, it's looking like we're going to get a distributor for that Danny DeVito movie I did. Oh, very uh, good. It's my first starring role. And uh, if you guys want to see the trailer, you can go to scatherstone.com. It's called House Broken. It's a really funny movie. Uh, he plays my dad. It's kind of like Home Alone for 20-somethings because it's, uh, it's about a dad trying to get the kids out of the house, trying to get two stoner 20-something, never had a job, never had a girlfriend, never gone to college kids, and push them out of the house and make them become something. So one weekend he just decides to kidnap his own wife who like doesn't want us to move out of the house. And the wife is Katie Seagal, you know, the mom from Married yeah. with Children. And uh, he kidnaps her, takes her on a fishing trip, and he basically puts hidden cameras all over the house that we don't see. And, uh, you know, uh, we just all of a sudden we're kind of left to fend for ourselves and see if we can pay bills. And they watch us, you know, from the cameras all along the way. So it's a really funny original movie. And so I, th- I think we got a shot. And Danny DeVito, he's so great. What was that like working with him? It was great. Like, uh, I actually, because, um, you know, one of my prank calls, you know, I called the Governor Schwarzenegger as Michael Douglas. Yeah. Well, he knows both of them, obviously. You know, he, he uh, he's really good friends with Michael Douglas. He did War of the Roses and he did Twins with Arnold. And so I told him about that prank. And he's like, oh, man. He's like, I can't, how could you possibly? He's like, they've known each other for years. How could you convince Arnold you're Michael Douglas? He's like, let me hear you Michael Douglas. And then I did it. He's like, oh, okay, you could totally fool me as well. Like, And he's known him for like 30 years. So, you know, <laughs> he said it was the best Douglas I ever heard. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. So, so you're going to do him next? Am I going to do Danny DeVito? Yeah. yeah. Gonna prank, I, him, prank him next? I have his email. I don't have his cell phone. And uh, if he's listening now, now it's pretty much, <laughs> it's, it's, thank you for ruining it for me. Um but uh, I don't know. You think Devito listens? You think he's a long time listener? We uh, we met him at a book signing not long ago. Uh, you did? It wasn't his book either. It was somebody else's book. But uh, yeah, we met him over at uh, in Beverly Hills at Crest Station. He makes and, uh, like a limoncello or something. Met, limoncello, uh, yeah, right, right, yeah, limoncello. You saw the time he got drunk and went on the View, right? Uh yes, I did see that. That's and, how the uh, limoncello thing like sprang. You know what yes. I mean? Yes. Ah, well, that's uh, that. That was all about the same time. I think that was were like a week or two apart. He was on like a uh, Jag uh, promoting that. I love that though. Like only celebrities can get away with stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's like here he was. He gets absolutely hammered. He goes on a talk show, and on the talk show, he's they're like, you know, why are you so drunk? He's like, oh, I had a couple of limoncellos last night with Clooney. You know, and he brags about it, and then all of a sudden it becomes this huge thing, this YouTube sensation. There's eight million hits, and his business manager turns to him and goes, "We should open up a line of limoncellos." <laughs> like, like you couldn't have that. Like in other, like you know, like Rodney. King couldn't have just all of a sudden after he got like you know beating beating the crap out of go Rodney King's nightsticks you know what I mean like he couldn't just start selling stuff I just love that now now we're we're big drinkers here at the Tom Lights so show. am I now limoncello if you're getting drunk on limoncello and bragging about it that's kind of a girly thing right? Come on. I, mean, I love limoncello you know as a little palate cleanser or something but if you're going around going last night I went out with the boys I had a couple of limoncellos what. Was that wait? Was that your Devito Penguin voice? No, it's like just <laughs> anybody who's just a guy standing around bragging about getting drunk. I, last night I had a couple of Shirley Temples, and then the boys and I 
<laughs> and how pissed do you think Clooney was that he got outed for like drinking limoncellos? Oh my God! Here's like the sexiest man in America, and all of a sudden everyone knows that Clooney drinks limoncellos. You know, had a couple of Long Island iced teas, and then we uh, watched uh, Sex in the City last. Yeah, night. we were hammered watching Pixar films. It was a blast. Guys, night in last night. <laughs> Believable. All right, you're going to be at the Hollywood Improv. What's that all about? Tell us about that. Uh, my 30th birthday bash is going to be at the Hollywood Improv on Melrose this Tuesday, the 20th. And uh, I would like to uh, invite all Thomas, Tom Likas listeners to come to the show. I'll give you free tickets if you email me at Skyler, S-K-Y-L-E-R, at SkylerStone.com. Uh, it's this Tuesday, 10 p.m., Hollywood Improv. The lineup is myself, obviously, my 30th birthday bash, uh, Harlan Williams from Half-Baked and Dumb and Dumber, uh, Finesse Mitchell from Saturday Night Live, Dave Attell from Insomniac, Dwayne Perkins, Steve Byrne, Bobby Lee from Mad TV. I mean, it's a, it's a sick lineup, so wow. it's going to be great. What a deal. This is Tuesday at the Hollywood Improv. Go to SkylarStone.com, and uh, thanks for coming in. Good to see you again. Yeah, you too. Absolutely great. Skylar Stone, Tuesday Night Hollywood Improv, everybody. Tom. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Wide open telephones. And if it goes, anything at all. We take more calls. We take them faster. And that means even you. You illiterate moron. Even you can get on the air. 1-800-5800-866. Six, six. Don't forget our Saturday show tomorrow from 2 until 6 p.m. That's right. We're now on six days a week. Saturdays, 2 until 6 p.m. We give you more value for your listening buck. That's right. Six shows for the price of five. It's one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing tonight? Pretty good. Hey, Tom, I got a question about my W-2. I, I have a pretty simple W-2. I, I only gross about 54000 I have my own apartment. Um, I don't have any write-offs. I don't have any kids or anything like that. And I've been going to the same tax person for ever since I've been doing my taxes. And lately I keep getting told I should go to another tax person or try someone else. I'm wondering, is, is there a way that another tax person could get me more back with just how simple my W-2 is? Well, it, it's not a matter of whether your W two is simple. It's a matter of do you itemize deductions? I, I really, I really don't have any any deductions. At least that's what you know my accountant told me. Because I just, I, I mean, I commute to work, but I get paid mileage. So I was told I couldn't write my gas off. Right. If you're paid for mileage, you can't write. Uh, you can't write that off. Of course. Uh, you have any other business expenses? No, I have Wives, my... ex-wives, children? Uh... I'm only 24, and I've been listening to you, Tom. I haven't right. had any girlfriends or anything like well, that. Well, chances are there's not much you can do. I mean, look, uh, how many exemptions do you claim? Uh, I claim zero on federal and one on state. Right. Uh, chances are there isn't much that can happen. You can always talk to another accountant. But uh, usually uh, the only way they can uh, get you more back is by lying on your behalf, and uh, you don't want to do that. No, I don't want to get in trouble with the government, that's for sure. Right. I mean, look, uh, they probably take out the right amount of, uh, of of taxes during the year. What was your refund again? Um, I haven't I haven't gotten it yet. Normally I get around... No, no, but you know how much it's supposed to be. How much was it last year? I got 1500 back last year, but I made less last year than I'm, I made this year because I just got promoted. Well, so I got promoted last year. And, and have you done your taxes yet? No, not yet. I'm still waiting for my W-2 in the mail. Well, 1500 for what you probably made last year is a good refund. Okay. And it's about what it should be. Okay. And then I also have a success story for you, Tom, that I use all the time. I read a, an article you had in a penthouse magazine, um, and I, I use it all the time. I When I'm at the ATM machine or the ATM, I, I look in the trash can next to it, and I find the receipt that has the most amount in it. You know, somebody's got $50,000 in their account. And then when I go to the club and if I give a girl my number, I write it on the back of that receipt. 99% of the time, I get a call back. It works the like clockwork. The, the ATM uh, receipt idea works like clockwork. And uh, I still recommend it. Uh, in fact, I have uh, ATM receipts in the six figures. You know, like uh, sometimes I've got as much as like a quarter million dollars in my checking account. So uh, I have friends who just want to pluck those off, and I, I give them away. I give right, them away. So, well, I thank you for your time. And uh, you everybody know, I know gets laid. It's great. It, it is great. Can you blow me up, Tom? Yes, yes, I can. 
one 800 tom is our telephone number. It's Mike on the Tom Lankish Show. Hello. Hey. Hey. How's it going, Tom? Uh, it's going pretty well. Yeah, I, had a, I got a little problem. My dad just got remarried. Yeah. And I didn't really, you know, get to know their other side of the family, you know, because I wasn't really interested until I met um, my stepmom's daughter who's smoking hot and she's got a boyfriend but we didn't see each other they went and got married somewhere else and you know since we've seen each other she's kind of you know thinking she might dump her boyfriend and hook up with me but i just wanted to know what you thought about that because i'm totally digging her well you're not related to her it's all about how that's going to cause the relationship with your dad to go I know. That's uh, what I'm saying. Well, maybe you need to talk to him. I don't want to say anything about it. Well, I want to hook up with her. Well, hook up, and then she's going to have to keep a secret, or you're going to have to run the risk that your dad's going to get pissed. Of course, you know, I, I can pretty much guarantee you that if your stepmom has a hot daughter, your dad's already thinking about the daughter. No. Of course he is. What, are you kidding? He's no, a guy. she's hot. My stepmom's hot. It doesn't matter. Your stepmom is what, 40? 42. 42. And the daughter is how old? 19. Tell you what, how old's your dad? 45. Let me tell you something. If I were dating a woman and she had a hot 19-year-old daughter, I'd be in bed with the mom thinking about the daughter. That's what I'd be doing. Oh, man. Your dad has already imagined this. I'll kill him. <laughs> well, that's the only reason I think your dad would get angry. Because you know, he, 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 this is what he wants. Well, I mean, she's she's just as hot as, you know, her daughter, but she's only, you know... No, but come on! She's fresh meat! She's 19! Oh, if my dad, if, if my dad did that, I, I'd disown him. Well, he may not do it, but it doesn't mean he doesn't think about it. And it doesn't mean he wouldn't be jealous if you did it. I know, but... Is that bad, though, to think about that? God, that's how guys are. Mike, you're a guy. Come on. I know. I'm, I'm, Come on. <laughs> hey, Tom, I'm totally jealous of your friends because they get to they get to pick your brain all the time and get all this good information. And, you know, we, we as listeners... And you just get, get crumbs. Yes, I understand. But at least you can call in. Well... But I'm telling you what, I'm thinking about her daughter now myself. Well, do that. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll one-up you. I'll just tell her I'm a multimillionaire. I'll just jump right in. Take over. Damn you. <laughs> Believe me, if you think your dad's not thinking about the daughter. <laughs> better not. Are you kidding me? I, I got to tap it first, Tom. <laughs> Well, uh, I'll tell you what, your dad may pull rank. Who knows? Oh, my gosh. I mean, come on. What do you, what do you think? He's not thinking about that? You're telling oh, no. me, it doesn't every guy in the world, if there's a if there's a hot mom and a hot daughter, aren't you thinking about both of them in the hot tub? Do you, you don't ever say to yourself, well, I'm dating the mom, so I don't ever think about the daughter. Cause I'm no, no. You think about the daughter. You just don't tell anybody you're thinking about the daughter. But you are. Yeah, but I, I don't think my dad's that kind of person, though. Oh, really? Why don't you ask him? Yeah, he's not going to tell me the truth. Yeah, well, there you go. So you already know he's probably thought about it. One night, by the way, he's married. One night when uh, your stepmom is, I don't know, out with the girls or something. I'm sure your dad is, uh, you know, uh, rolled up the uh, window shades and uh, gotten under the covers for a few minutes and given that some thought. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> See, now you're know. now you're thinking about your dad and her. Ooh wee. Well, I wouldn't mind uh, hitting on the mom. Uh, see, now look at you thinking about the mom. That's your that's that's your dad's wife, for God's sake. Here you are getting upset at your dad thinking about the daughter. Here you are thinking about the mom. This is your dad's wife. 
I know, but I'm I'm a young man. Oh, I should be thinking about that. <laughs> let me tell you something. <laughs> it's only natural, Mike. Thanks for the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Dana is calling from Beaverton, Oregon, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I love you. Thank you. A little later tonight, I'll tell you how Beaverton got it tonight. <laughs> After the call or right now? <laughs> well, a little later. Okay. I just had a quick question for you. Yes. Um, I have been There's still 2,000 about... pounds at a ton, right? What was that? There's still 2,000 pounds at a ton, right? <laughs> uh, kind of. <laughs> just checking. Um, I was wondering um, on your opinion on if I should uh, drop my career in radio and uh, go into the military. For what purpose? Guaranteed um, guaranteed employment? <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of looking forward to getting into the military mainly for a sign-on bonus and to forgive my student loans. Boy, oh boy, the economy must be really bad when people are asking questions like this. Well, do you think it's a good idea, or how do you feel about the well, military? Well, the military, look, obviously I, I'm, I'm thrilled that people want to join the military. You understand, when you go into the military, uh, being assigned to a place like Afghanistan is a possibility. Yeah. Are you prepared to do that just to pay off a student loan? Um... Well, I'm prepared to get out of my job right That's, now. No, no, no. Getting out of a job in radio is nothing like going and being in Afghanistan in a war. Correct. Okay. You could end up there. Right. How would you feel if, if you went from uh, your radio job where breaking a nail or getting undercut on the rate card are your biggest concerns uh, to being in a war in Afghanistan? How would you feel about that? Um, I think I would like it. Really? Well, maybe you've got your answer there. All right, Jay. Tom at blowmeuptom.com is the email address. We'll be here tomorrow from 2 until 6 p.m. tomorrow. The Tom Likas Show.